Bonjour, Natalie here. Welcome to Franco Foods. Today, I'm making the Greek dish called pasticcio. Basically, it's a Greek lasagna. Now, some of you are probably thinking, this is Franco Foods, why are you making a Greek dish? Well, la raison d'être of Franco Foods is to discover the foods of the 80 plus countries who are members of the Organisation Internationale de la Francophonie. To start, I'm making the meat sauce. Now, the recipe calls for two medium red onions, but I could only find large ones, so I'm only gonna chop one up. By the way, please share in the comments if you have a trick so that I don't cry when I'm cutting onions. I would really appreciate that. While I'm making the sauce, I'm also cooking the pasta. The pasticcio calls for a long macaroni type of pasta, which is called bucatini. I could not find any, so instead I'm using ziti. So France and Greece have a long interwoven history that goes at least as far as the pre-Roman era. There were Greek colonies in Gaul at that time, the most important of which was Massilia, which is now Marseille. Greek civilization grew within Gaul, and by 300 BC, Gaul was part of ancient Greece, or what was known as the Hellenistic era. While the sauce is simmering, I'm preparing the base of the pasticcio with the cooked pasta. I have to say, one thing that I really like about a recipe like this is that you use everything. The egg whites are used for the pasta mix and the yolks for the bechamel. So much later in history, the Greeks wanted to win their independence from the Ottoman Empire. The success of the French Revolution spurred them on and the Greek War of Independence started in February of 1821. Eleven years later, the Turkish Sultan recognized Greek independence at the Treaty of Constantinople in July 1832. The meat is cooked, the base is ready. Now I'm gonna layer the meat sauce. Ah, oh, it smells so good. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna sip this aside and I'm gonna make the bechamel sauce. With such a long history between France and Greece, there had to have been mutual inspiration for the cuisine, right? Logic dictates, I would say. Well, one of the most obvious connections was the addition of bechamel sauce to moussaka, pasticcio, and many other dishes. So you'll notice that this bechamel sauce is different from the traditional French one. They've added yolk and cheese. So it's more akin to what the French would call a Mornay sauce. I guess this is a Greek bechamel sauce. It was in the 1920s that a French-trained Greek chef called Nicolas Salamentes, who created and added this bechamel sauce to Greek dishes such as pasticcio and moussaka. He wanted to, shall we say, Europeanize Greek cooking. His experience was working in consulates and restaurants throughout Europe, so of course that would have had an impact on his own cooking, right? So was that a good change for some traditional Greeks? Maybe not, but I certainly enjoy the result. I love Greek food. Okay, the sauce is ready. Time to add it to the top of the casserole. Now, I am a little nervous that my dish is perhaps too shallow, so that's why I put it on a cookie sheet and I'm pouring the sauce one ladle full at a time. Top with a bit of grated Parmesan, Time for the oven. So the pasticcio will be ready in about 40 minutes. I do have some bechamel sauce left over, but that's okay. I'm just gonna put it in the refrigerator and I happen to have leftover mac and cheese, so I'll just use that together. You could also use it for topping a chicken or fish dish. That would be really good too. This week's vocab is la pâte alimentaire, le bœuf haché, la pâte de tomate, une entrée, le plat principal. The house smells great! So I took the pasticcio out after 40 minutes and I let it sit for about 30 minutes to cool and set. It's still plenty hot for serving. And I'm glad I put it on the cookie sheet because the sauce did bubble over just a little bit over the edge. And I'm also glad I didn't use all of the sauce because I'm sure that would have been quite messy. Okay, the first serving is always the hardest one to get out without making a mess. At least it is for me. But the layers are looking nice. Mmm. Yeah, mmm, that this is good. I'm liking it. I better taste it again just to be sure. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode and that, like me, you learned something new about the world of French-inspired food. There's so much to discover. Until next time, merci et à la prochaine!